The Indus River rises just north of Mount Kailash in western Tibet and flows northwest through Kashmir along the northern slopes of Mount Nanga Parbat. As it approaches Mount Phalaksar, it bends sharply south through the Hindu Kush range. After it meets the Kabul River a few miles northeast of Peshawar, it carves the Indus Valley all the way to the Indian Ocean. The region of Gandhara centers around Peshawar in northern Pakistan, but also includes eastern Afghanistan and western Kashmir. Its earliest inhabitants were the mysterious Soanians, whose modern-day descendants are the Barusho and Brakpa tribes. Their southern neighbors were the Dravidians, who gave rise to the Indus Valley civilization whose largest settlement is known as Mohenjo-daro, meaning the Mound of the Dead. Gandhara has been regarded as the cradle of the Indo-Aryan people, who migrated from Central Asia in the early 2nd millennium BCE and brought forth a Swat civilization, whose legacy has been preserved by the Kalash and Co tribes. Indo-Aryans spoke an ancient variety of Sanskrit and composed the Rig Veda, that is, the oldest surviving Indo-European text. Gandhara is renowned for a hot spring named Garam Chashma, often referred to as the Fountain of Youth, and Lake Wular, anciently believed to be a dragon's abode. The city of Taxila was founded by Rama's brother Bharata, and its university was one of the oldest in the world. Persian king Darius the Great conquered Gandhara in 519 BCE. Local folklore has it that in the 5th century BCE, a Persian satrap of Gandhara named Mahakapina traveled to Shravasti to meet the Buddha, who immediately recognized him as an incarnation of a long-lost holy man named Dharmakara. Mahakapina was ordained, received the monastic name Amitabha, and eventually became a fully enlightened being in his own right. As he returned to Gandhara, he decided to sow the seeds of Buddhism there, and prophesied that the country would soon become a blissful spiritual realm. Over time, the savior figure of Amitabha gave rise to the pure land myth, whose imagery still permeates Mahayana traditions today. Macedonian king Alexander the Great and his Greek army conquered Gandhara in 326 BC. North India's Maurya Empire annexed it about three decades later and initiated the Golden Age of Gandhara. The Buddhist monk Majantika from Varanasi was deputed by Emperor Ashoka to spread Buddhism in Gandhara in the 3rd century BC. In the next few hundred years, the region was reconquered by Indo-Greeks and Indo-Scythians. Gandharan monks produced the oldest Buddhist manuscripts ever written. The name Shingadar a remote secret site in northern Pakistan was morphed into Shangri-La by author James Hilton when he wrote his novel Lost Horizon after visiting the region in 1932. Gandhara's Khyber Pass was the main gateway through which Buddhism spread to China, Mongolia, Korea and Japan. In the 2nd century BC, Zhang Qian was the first Chinese explorer to visit Gandhara. Until the 1st century BC, no paintings or statues of the Buddha had been created, lest they contradict his teachings of non-self. However, in Gandhara, elements of Hindu iconography influenced by Greco-Roman art led to the first depictions of the Buddha in eastern Afghanistan. According to an apocryphal story, Jesus Christ did not die on the cross. Rather, he traveled to Gandhara, where he became known by the name Hazrat Yoza, 
and lived to a ripe old age among the local Jewish community. Some claim that his tomb is located inside a shrine in the city of Srinagar. In the 2nd century CE, Lokakshema was the first Buddhist monk from Gandhara who traveled to China and translated Buddhist texts into Chinese. In the following century, other explorers traveled from India through Pakistan, Afghanistan and China all the way to Korea or vice versa. The golden age of Gandhara came to an end shortly after it was invaded by Arab conqueror Muhammad ibn Qasim in 711, who began a gradual process of Islamization which continues to this day. However, by the 7th century, the allegory of a transcendental pure land somewhere west of China and India had become popular throughout East Asia, supported by pre-existing beliefs in a heavenly realm. The greeting and exclamation Namo Amitabhaya, or simply Amitabha, soon supplanted older interjections like Namo Buddhaya or Namaste across the Mahayana Buddhist world. Meditators hope that by invoking Amitabha's name they will eventually meet him in his divine abode and attain spiritual liberation in the next life. <laughs>